Today's tutorial is all about both of my loves. That's right, we're combining the ocean and fiber as we make this awesome and comfortable mermaid tail. Let's dive right in. So my favorite part in putting this project together was actually picking out the fabrics from Shannon. I just love their textures. It is so soft and snuggly. So I chose their dimples or goosebump texture to kind of look like the body of the, the mermaid's tail itself. And then you'll need a yard and a quarter for an adult size, probably three quarters to one yard for a smaller adult or child size, right? And then you're going to want a half yard for your fin piece. And for the fin piece, I chose this fabric, which I absolutely love. And it looks just like fish scales. But while you're handling it, I want to make sure you realize there's a definite upside. So your scales are going to be pointing down like this on that half yard for the actual fin that you need. Now, the easiest way to handle this stuff is to go ahead and start with the body of the mermaid tail. And as I'm holding this, I'm, I might as well point out, you're also going to want enough of the one inch elastic to go around your waist so that you can snug it up while you're sitting comfortably in your mermaid tail. Okay. So with that said, I want to go ahead and start by showing you what I did with the half yard first, the fin portion. Okay, so when working with the cuddle fabrics, I find it's easiest to work with them right sides together. It helps them not slip around quite as much. So right now, this is the top and I need to remember that. And I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to fold it in half, super simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch across this bottom line right here. The other thing that really helps when you're working with some of these slippery fabrics is use a few extra straight pins. It just helps to take a few minutes and do that. Okay, but we don't need to have anything else special with our sewing machine set up or anything like that. But I like pins and wonder clips are also a great way to keep this stuff from shifting around too much. And because we're on the fold, and I didn't realize that I just put the pins on the wrong side, but we'll be okay. We'll just stitch really closely around them because I don't want to sew through them. I'm going to come down here, and I'm doing about a 3 8 seam allowance today. I'm going to back stitch, and I did start at the corner in case there is any shifting. I don't want to get a ripple. And I'm going to blast into caffeination mode and just get all this, all this stitching done here. Okay. So that was for the fin, and all we needed was that straight line across the bottom. So this fabric is 60 inches wide, so that's 30 inches of sewing, and it's 18 inches tall, just to make sure you have your orientation correct. Get those pins out of the way, if you will. And now we're going to move on to the body of the actual mermaid tail, and we're just going to come back to this in a few minutes. So let's set it aside. So the, what I did when I was goofing around in my studio is I just took my yard and a quarter's worth of fabric. So you're going to have 45 by 60. And I just kind of wrapped it around my body to see, oh, that's way too big. So then I turned it this way. So here's the selvage end now in my hand from hand to hand. And then I wrapped it this way and I realized, oh, I can make that no problem. So what I decided to do was I'm going to fold this now in half this way. So at a yard and a quarter, you're probably at 22, and then it's going to be 60 long. And the easiest thing to do is we're going to cut a taper into this, but I'm going to sew it into place first. So then what I did is I simply took with my Sharpie marker, and I measured over on this, and this is the whole body, right? So we're not, I showed you I was going to cut this angle, but we're actually cutting this angle. So I came over and I measured 8 inches on the bottom and I put a mark. And then I spun it around and I came over eight inches and I put a mark, okay? So this is where the taper is gonna start. Then on my body, I just played with my measurements a little bit and I came up with 36 inches from the tip up to where it's gonna hit on the edge. So for you all, depending on your size, I'm about six foot on a really good day with curly hair, I'm six foot. But at any rate, so uh, I found 36 inches was a great mark. So here's my 24. I'm going to come up um, 12 more, and I'm going to put a mark right here. Okay. And then what I did is I basically took a yardstick because it worked, but I can kind of eyeball this while we got the cameras rolling today. And I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to draw a line. And then, of course, I would do the same on the other side. 
And then what I did is I took, now don't worry, I've got another sample I'm going to show you here in a second. Then what I did is I took pins and I laid the pins actually through that line because that line is going to be the sewing line. We're going to pin, we're going to sew, and then we're going to cut it. Let me show you that sample. We've got it right here set aside for you. And you'll probably find with this much fabric, you might still get a little bit of a ripple in it while you're working. And because you're going to slide your body in here, that is no problem at all. So you can see I somehow trapped a little extra space in there, but it wasn't a problem. Now, let me stop moving around so much. And you can see that there is now the stitch line on the um, drawn line that I put in there. And now that it's been sewn, I can take out the rotary cutter and I'm just going to literally come up here and just trim this down on both sides, forming that taper that gives that wonderful character down to the fin of the mermaid. If you've never worked with any of these fibers before, one of the other tricks that's really good is to have a small shop vac handy or a lint roller because you can see the nature of that soft fuzz kind of comes off as you're cutting. So having something to clean up is nice if you need, right? So now that has actually formed the whole taper of our mermaid tail. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to prepare the fin again. So let me make sure that doesn't slip off. Now. This is what we're looking to do, something like that. I'm going to show you a super easy way to do it, though. Okay, so that's where we're heading. We take that, well, let me use this, that might act as an anchor. Ha <laughs> ha, things are working out good today, I'll tell you. So, what I want you to do again, now we have that fin we were working on. This is the sewing line down here. I want you to go ahead and fold it one more time, okay? Now, oops, I got a pin stuck in there. The center of the fin is going to be in the center of the body, and then the openings and the folded line are out on this outer side. So this is the fold, these are the edges, okay? Make sure we have that. And then what I did is I just moved this out of the way. That's not exactly true. <laughs> the first thing I did is I took my ruler and I laid it across here with about four inches at the bottom and then a couple inches at the top. Then I moved it out of the way so that I didn't cut into it. I've got it perfectly shaped. And then all we have to do is get in here and cut through there. Now this, because it's got all that super cool texture, is going to make a big mess. This is not a good time to sneeze or I'll cover the whole camera with fiber, right? <laughs> so I've got those lines cut in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start again on that bottom fold and I'm going to finish this stitching out. I'm not going to finish the complete top. It's not necessary, and I wouldn't be able to turn it right sides out. So with that same 3 8 I'm going to come up that straight side, and I'm just going to curve right into the rest of the run. Now, this is a polyester-based fabric, so I'm using polyester-based thread, and I'm going to be crawling in and out of it a bunch, so I want it nice and strong. Okay, like that. And then I would do the same to the other side so that when it's all done, again, it has this shape, right? And that opening is still open at the top. Whoops, there goes my body. I'll have to go for a little swim and come back with it here in a second <laughs> once I get these turned right sides out and push those corners as they should be. Better dive under my table. Be right back. Now that I have the body of the tail, anchored to the top of my table here, we're going to go ahead and put the fin in. Now the fin is right sides out, the body is right sides together, and what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in here like this, upside down. So again, we're going to fold it so it's easy to work with. I'm going to slide it up in here, like yay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for the side seams, and I'm going to match them up to the side seams here. Now, if I was doing something that was very precise and accurate, I might have used measurements in there, but I just eyeballed it, and that's okay. It might get a little lumpy because of that, but again, we're looking for fun ripple texture because of the way it's built. So it's really fun that way, and we're just going to line that up. If you have to cheat a little over to the sides, so get a good inch of that sticking out the bottom so you can really find it while you're sewing like that. And then I'm going to lift it up, 
I'm bringing it to my machine, but I am going to take a moment and just make sure it's polished before I get started. And even though this cuddle fabric is thick, it sews like butter. Just make sure you have all four edges under the needle. And I'm going to go up about an inch this time. I really want to capture this. And here we go. Right over all those fun little ripples and wrinkles and fun and everything in there. Back stitch. And then my trick on this is I flip it over and before I get going too far, I make sure that I caught it on both sides so it really can't get away from me there. And then once that's done, it's as easy as turning this thing back out. And here comes the fin, just like that, and not cool, right? And then the last thing we need to do is prepare for our waistband. So I'm going to come up here, and again, what I did is I slid myself into the tail, and I just figured out where I wanted it. Um, Obviously, if you're putting an infant in here, you do not want it too tall, and you probably do not want elastic around the top. It's just a fun little toy. If you're wearing it on the couch so that you can enjoy your TV time that way, the elastic's really nice. For me, I ended up cutting about three inches off the top, and I just folded it nice and flat, looked at it about like this, three inches, and I trimmed it off first, like yay. And then I went over to my sewing machine and I folded it down about two more inches because I'm going to use this as the casing for my elastic. Now these fabrics do not unravel. They do fray at first. You know that fuzz is coming off, but that's just because it's thick fabric. It's not going to unravel, so I do not need to double fold this. I'm going to start kind of in the middle. And now as I'm sewing, I'm matching up my side seams right here to make sure that I'm not getting shifting. And I'm giving myself a good inch pocket to slide that elastic into. Lining up the other side seam now. Looks like this is going terrific. And then just don't sew it completely closed. We need to leave about a two inch opening to slide our elastic into. So I'm gonna back stitch here like that. This opening here allows us to slide the elastic up inside. And then what I like to do is take my elastic out of the package, of course. And so the, the rule of elastic really is take your waist size and subtract about two inches worth. And generally that will give you enough stretch that it holds it up but doesn't choke you so you turn blue in the face later on kind of thing. So take your measurement around your waist, touch it, Shorten it by a couple of inches and then just cut that off. That's the easiest way to measure your elastic. Okay. Then if you haven't ever done elastic, you may not appreciate this trick. If you've done elastic before, you're going to love this trick. You think I'm putting this pin in here as my lead pin. Heck no. I'm putting this pin over here and I'm pinning it to the outside so it doesn't ever get away from me. Then I take my bigger of the two safety pins and I slide it through the front end and that becomes my lead pin as I go ahead and I start to fish this through the bay or in, in my casing that I've created here. And what I'll do is I'll feed this all the way around and once it's done we need to stitch the elastic together. I can show you that here in a second and then finish off that pocket. Okay so we're coming out of the sleeve here or coming out of the casing I guess I should call it or almost out of the casing and the next thing before we even stitch it we just want to make sure our elastic didn't twist on us. Usually it doesn't when you have a, a pretty narrow casing like that, but something to try. So now I've gripped this side. I'm not going to let the other side get away from me. I've gripped this side and it just came around. So it went in. There's my front. Bring this like this. And now what we want to do is we want to overlap our elastic by about another inch. And then I'm just going to lay this on the machine. Get myself a few stitches and a back stitch all the way across. And I'm gonna do it at the other end of the elastic too for security and comfort. Okay, that's dialed in now. And then once that's in, then all you have to do is start to tug on your waistband. The elastic has disappeared into the casing and then you would just finish that stitching, slide on into your mermaid tail and you are all set for a super summer swim or a snuggly time on the couch. It doesn't get any more awesome than that. Oh wait, it may. 
As a matter of fact, some of you quilters out there may also be thinking, can I apply some quilting techniques? And as a matter of fact, you certainly can. I've got a good friend that created a cool mermaid tail pattern that uses a bunch of fun quilting and piecing techniques as well. So check that out also, and we will catch you next time right here at Man Sewing.